What are some things you should never do at Alton Towers? If you've ever been to the Alton Towers Resort, you'll know that the place is huge. It's the UK's biggest theme park and is full of rides, roller coasters, restaurants and all sorts of entertainment. You're always sure to have an enjoyable day when you visit, but there are some things that could slow down or even ruin your day at the park. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at 5 things to avoid doing at Alton Towers in 2023. Now Alton Towers and other parks owned by Merlin Entertainment are known for having short operating hours. Alton Towers opening times vary throughout the year, but at times they can be as short as 6 hours. When you pay for entry, you want as much time as possible, especially with a park as busy as Alton Towers. There's been times when rides such as the Smiler and the Wicker Man have had wait times of 2-3 to three hours. So that would be a third or even half your day wasted waiting for just one ride. However, there are times throughout the year where the park is open for much longer. During events such as Scarefest and Oktoberfest, Alton Towers offer rides in the dark, so for that to happen, the park needs to of course be open when it's dark. During Scarefest, the park is currently advertising to open at 10am and close at 9pm, which is 5 hours more than the regular operating hours. So even if you don't want to do all the scary horror mazes, it's still worth visiting during Scarefest because you'll get longer inside the park. During the busy periods such as August, the park is also open till 6pm, so that gives you another couple hours longer inside the park. However, be aware that August is the peak time to visit Alton Towers, or any theme park for that matter, so it's likely that the queues will be longer than other times throughout the year. Now, I will always say that if you want to ride as many rides and roller coasters at Alton Towers as possible, then always visit on a weekday outside of the school holidays. But what if it's not possible to visit on a weekday? And what if it's not possible to visit outside of the school holidays? It doesn't necessarily mean that you won't get on any rides, you just have to plan your day beforehand. Something you should never do is join a queue for a top ride during peak times. Now, for Alton Towers, this will be the Smiler, the Wicker Man, and although I'm making this video before it's even open, I'd imagine that the brand new Curse at Alton Manor will also be one of those top rides too, at least for the first part of the 2023 season anyway. So when the park opens in the morning, guests will usually head straight to these rides, making the queue times an hour plus, right at the start of the day. Now usually I would recommend heading to Nemesis at the start of the day, but seeing as most of the track is currently disassembled, this won't be the case for 2023. So instead, head to Galactica, or even Rita and 13. If you want to head straight onto a ride with a very minimal wait time, then maybe even head somewhere like Katanga Canyon for the Runaway Mine Train and the Congo River Rapids, or you could even try Spinball Wizard. Just try and avoid the Smiler and the Wicker Man first thing, as you could get on plenty of other rides during the time you would spend queuing. I'd say the best time to try the Smiler and the Wicker Man are lunchtime and the very end of your day. At lunchtime, people will be heading to the restaurants to grab some food, meaning less people will be queuing for rides. As well as that, once everyone has gone to those popular rides in the morning, they'll then head off and go on the other rides, giving you an opportunity to join a less busy queue. I'd also recommend joining queues at the very end of your day, because Alton Towers cut off the queue lines at the advertised closing time, so if you were to visit on a day which closes at 4, if you visited at 3.59, you'd still be able to join that queue and get on that ride or roller coaster. So to sum all that up, don't go on those popular rides in the morning, wait till around lunchtime or later on in the day. So sticking with the topic of different areas getting busy at different times, sit down restaurants and even quick service restaurants can get super busy around lunchtime. You have some fantastic restaurants at Alton Towers such as the Roller Coaster Restaurant and the Pizza Pasta Buffet which is always one of my favourites. But during the hours of 11 till 1, a lot of guests will head there for lunch as these are of course the general lunchtime hours. Even the lines to grab a hot dog or a snack can get quite long during these hours, so I would recommend grabbing something to eat just before those peak lunch hours, or if you can hold off a while, then wait until around 1 or even 2pm. That way you don't have to wait in as long of a queue, and as I mentioned previously, you can get on those popular rides whilst everyone is off having lunch. I'd say the only exception to this is if you visit during an event such as Oktoberfest or Scarefest. 
Alton Towers offer a wider variety of food options at these events, which spread guests out all over the park, so you'll find the lines for restaurants are much shorter during these events. Now if you didn't already know, Alton Towers, as well as pretty much any other theme park, charge more on the gate than if you pre-book in advance. Now although pretty much every theme park does this, Alton Towers does need a special mention, because in 2023, those on the gate prices are a lot higher than anybody would want to pay, especially if the park's only open for 6 hours. The website currently states that on the day ticket prices are from £68 per person. However, if you buy in advance, then tickets are from £36 per person. That is a 47% increase from the day tickets compared to the pre-book tickets. So unless you're making a spontaneous trip, then definitely book in advance or it will cost you almost the price of another person just to get into the park and then you'll have all your food, drinks, merch and all the other expenditures on top of that too. If you can find a two-for-one entry, which you'll sometimes find on soaps and cereals, then you'll save a little more, as this will be half of that on the day ticket price, meaning it'll be £34 per person. But it may just be easier to book in advance for that extra £2. If you visit Alton Towers and other theme parks often, then I would highly recommend a Merlin Annual Pass. This gives you access to all Merlin attractions such as Alton Towers, Fort Park, Legoland Windsor, Chessington World of Adventures and more. It also gets you discounts inside the park on merchandise and food, and it works out so much cheaper. I'm currently a gold annual pass holder and I pay monthly. This gives me access to Merlin parks and attractions for over 340 days a year and 20% off inside the parks on retail, food and beverages and I only pay $14.99 a month for all of that. So you only have to visit one Merlin attraction every two months to benefit from this. There's also a Silver Pass for $9.99 a month, which has a few more restriction days, however it's still going to save you a lot of money if you visit the parks often. There's also the Platinum Pass, which I'll probably sign up for one day, and this gives you access for all days apart from the paid events. So if you're visiting Alton Towers as a one-off, then definitely pre-book in advance, but if you visit the park often or visit any Merlin Park or attraction often, then I would definitely recommend investing in an annual pass. Finally, let's talk about banned items. Now, it goes without saying that bringing a banned item into Alton Towers, it's never going to end well. There's a whole list in the Alton Towers terms and conditions, which I won't read out in full, but some of the main items which you may possibly think of bringing in, but you shouldn't, are glass bottles or any glass articles that could cause injury. Sharp objects, now knives are obviously not allowed, and I'm sure you'll be aware of that without me telling you, but objects such as scissors and metal nail files are also banned, so be sure to leave them at home and wait till your day at Alton Towers is over before giving yourself a manicure. Alcohol and illegal substances are also banned, there are events now where you can buy alcoholic beverages, but you're not allowed to bring them inside the park. Illegal substances are, and always will be, a big no-no. Skateboards, roller skates and roller blades are not allowed inside the park. There's plenty of roller coasters, so leave your roller blades at home. And finally, drones are banned from the park. A lot of people have opinions about flying drones over Alton Towers, but bringing them in is not allowed and could get you banned from the park, which I'm sure you wouldn't want. On top of that, you can film inside the park. I do this every time I visit so I can make videos for this channel. However, you can't film on the rides. If you do, then not only is it dangerous to yourself and other guests, but it could also get you kicked out and banned, so don't do it. So there we have it, some things to never do at the Alton Towers Resorts. I'm sure there's plenty more, and if I didn't mention it in this video, then be sure to post it down in the comments below. If you did enjoy watching this video, then please hit that like button to let me know, and if you are new around here, then please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that notification bell so you don't miss a single thing, because we make plenty of theme park and adventure videos here, which you don't want to miss. If you want to find out why we may see less guests at Alton Towers in 2023, then click this video right here. Or if you want to find out the best rides at Alton Towers in 2023, then maybe consider checking this one out too. There's plenty more Alton Towers content coming up on the channel this year, so make sure to stay tuned for all that. But until then, 
Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.